In this video, let us see about the Cramer's rule which can be used to solve the mesh equations. So in mesh analysis, the first step is identifying the number of meshes. Then we will mark the current direction and we will write the mesh equation. Now, you can either solve the equation directly or you can apply Cramer's rule that is writing in a matrix form and solving the matrix to find the currents. So let us take the problem 1. So this problem we have already solved in the previous video that is uh, Kitschaff's voltage law and current law video we have already taken these two problems the same problem i have taken but here we will solve using Cramer's rule so this is the uh, circuit with two voltage sources so you have two meshes and two variables i1 and i2 so the question is we have to find the current through three ohm resistor so you have to find what is I1, I2. I1 minus I2 will give you the current through this resistor. So two meshes, two unknown variables. So you will get two equations. So already we have seen how to write the equation in the previous video. So take the first loop, write the equation. So negative to positive, always take it as positive because it is a rise in potential. Positive to negative, that is the resistor, there will be a drop in voltage. So it is taken as negative. Minus 6 I1, what is the current through 3 ohm resistor? I1 minus I2. So it is minus 3 into I1 minus I2 equal to 0. Similarly, Okay, you simplify this one, you will get the equation. Next, uh, we will write for loop 2. So, let me start from here. Minus 4 I, I2. This is negative to positive. So, plus 10 minus 3 into. So, when you are writing for loop 2, you have to write it as I2 minus I1 equal to 0. So you got two equations. Now, you already we have solved these two equations. So the answer what we have to get is 4 amps and 6 amps. I1 is 6 amps and I2 is 4 amps and the current through 3 ohm is 2 amps. Now you have two equations, so write those equations in the matrix form. So take the first equation, what are the constants 9 and minus 3. So 9 minus 3 becomes the first row for the matrix. So the variables are I1 and I2. So mark that and uh, you check the equation here. Now 9 I1 minus 3 I2 should be equal to 42 so you write 42 here so the second equation is you have minus 3 and 7 so that will be the second row and that is equal to 10 so you will get 10 here you can check the equation minus 3 i1 plus 7 i2 equal to 10 okay so now you got the matrix form find the determinant of this matrix so how to find the determinant? See this method Cramer's rule will be simple and easy but you should be thorough in matrix. Okay. So you find the determinant of this matrix. So 9 into 7 is 63 minus 9. So 54 is the determinant value for this matrix. Now we have to find I1 and I2. One by one we can find it out. Now we have found what is del value. 
so now we will find what is this i1 and i2 so how to find this one let us find what is del 1 first what is del 1 you see here same matrix you take it instead of first column okay instead of this first column take this column and put it here so that will be the del 1 If you want to find I1, the first column should be replaced by this one. So, you find the determinant of this one, 42 into 7 plus 3 into 10. So, you will get del 1. What is I1? Del 1 by del will give you I1. So, del 1 is this one and del is this one. You will get I1. Always write the units. Okay. Whenever you find the current, you need this amps. You write it. And to find del 2, take the same matrix, but you take the, replace the second column by this one. So, second column you will have 42 and 10. Now you find the determinant. And again, I2 is del 2 by del. That will give you 4 amps. So, you can verify the answer because we have already solved these equations. You got 4 amps and 6 amps only and the current through 3 ohms will be 2 amps. So, it is very simple. Whenever you get 2 equation or 3 equation, always prefer Cramer's rule. It is very easy and if you know to solve using calculator, you can directly find the determinant value using calculator also. Let us uh, see the second problem. This problem is also already solved in the previous Kirchhoff's law video. Same problem I have taken. We have already seen how to write the equations. So, you have three loops and you will get three equations. So, there are three variables. You have to find what are the current I1, I2 and I3. So, by solving, solving these three equations, you will get this as the current. Now, let us apply Cramer's rule to this um, circuit and find the currents I1, I2 and I3. So, three equations are there. Let us uh, write, write it in the matrix form. So, first equation, take the first equation. What are the variables? 3, minus 1 and minus 2. So, it is 3, minus 1, minus 2 equal to 1. Okay. The second equation is minus 1, 6 and minus 3. Minus 1, 6, minus 3 equal to 0. Similarly, you can write the third equation, minus 2, minus 3, 6, equal to 6. Now, you can see the matrix here. If you take the current directions, all the three directions uh, are same. You see the matrix, the diagonals are positive and the other elements have a negative sign. Okay. And one more thing you can see here, these three things are similar to these three things. Okay. So, here you have 3, 6 and 6. See, there is another method to write the matrix even without writing the equations. Here you have written the equation and after that you wrote the matrix. But without writing the equation also you can directly write the matrix by seeing the circuit. So take the first loop, add all the resistances in the first loop. So 2, 1 ohm and 2 ohm. So it is totally 3. So write that 3 here. And for second variable, find what is the 
common element between first loop and second loop that is 1 ohm so it is minus 1 and for third one you find what is common between first loop and third loop so it is minus 2 so why do you get minus sign because it this current is negative and this current is also negative so by inspection method if you want to write always choose the current in same direction okay all the three currents are in clockwise direction if you write like that it is very easy always you will get the diagonal element as positive and remaining element as negative so it is easy to identify if you do any mistakes then you have to write what is the voltage how to find this one so for me let us um, you see here 7 volt is there this current is going from negative to positive so negative to positive means it is rise in potential so it is plus 7 and this current is coming like this and if you come here you have a voltage source here this is plus to minus so it is drop in potential so plus 7 minus 6 is equal to 1 so here you write it as plus 1 okay. then let us go for the second loop in second loop first variable should be what is common between first loop and second loop so what is that minus 1 so you will get minus 1 and for second one you add all the resistance so 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 6 and for third variable that is this third variable you have to find what is common between second loop and third loop that is 3 so it is minus 3 here you don't have any voltage source so write it as 0 next take the third loop first thing you have to find what is common between first loop and second loop uh, sorry third loop that is minus 2 for this one you have to find what is common between second loop and third loop so that is minus 3 for this part you have to find what are all the resistances connected in loop 3 so 3 plus 1 4 plus 2 6 okay so you can verify all the diagonal elements will be positive remaining elements will be negative and this portion is similar to this portion and here you have a voltage source in third loop you see the current direction it is going from negative to positive so it is rise in potential so it is taken as plus 6 always remember it is easy to write in inspection method directly but only thing you make sure that you take the current direction in all the three currents have same direction if you take in opposite direction also you can write the matrix but you, your matrix might be little different because the polarity will change and some currents get added so you will not you cannot follow this one so always take the current in same direction and write by inspection method now let us find the determinant value of this matrix so it is equal to 39 now let us find what is uh, del 1 so for del 1 we have to replace the first column by the right hand side values that is 106 so you find the determinant value what is i1 del 1 by del so you will get 3 amps again del 2 we have to replace the second column by right hand side values 
so here this one and here this one so you find what is i2 and similarly you find what is i3 okay so you got the same answers so this grammar's rule will help to reduce the time you can do it simply but it it will be difficult only when you go for a, a bigger matrix otherwise uh, with calculator we can easily finish it all so if you like the video do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel thank you these are some of the references i have used